You're listening to the Electronic Media Collective Podcast Network. Yeah, it's a mouthful. For more great shows like the one you're about to enjoy, visit electronicmediacollective.com. And now, our feature presentation. Hey, Jordan, your usual drink tonight? Yes, thank you. So, where's Eric and Ryan? Well, they're on their way. I wanted to listen to your latest podcast, but where can I download the episodes again? You can download all of our episodes at movieguyspodcast.podme.com. You can also find us on every social media platform. Every social media platform? That's awesome. Hey, it looks like your friends are here. Let me get the first round for you guys. So I watched this movie. This movie happened. Um, I, you know what? The Last American Virgin, Virgin is the greatest B movie to Fast Times at Ridgemont High because I don't give a flying shit about any of the characters whatsoever. Eric, did you? This felt like it was a book that I read. <laughs> To be honest, just the, from the start to finish and the way that it ended as well, too. I There were a lot of points where I was just like, like holy shit, this, they let this on TV. Where it just really seemed, uh, yeah, like out of a novel, I, I think. Um, Ryan, what do you think? I feel like I've seen this movie somewhere before. Like, there's a lot of familiarity in the setups and everything that goes on. Yeah, yeah, it's called Fast Times, and it's called American Pie. That's exactly well, what this movie is. Well, this movie came out. In, well, this movie came out in '82, which is the same year that Fast Times came out. But it's this is a um, it's a remake of an Israeli film from '78, which actually, when I was looking it up, was um, Israel's submission to the Oscars that year for Best Foreign Language film and it actually got nominated at the golden globes in that category in 79 um it's called lemonade popsicle i think lemonade yeah, popsicle that's right um really popular in israel really popular in germany too west germany um yeah this is a direct remake of that written and directed by the same guy who wrote and directed the for uh lemonade popsicle um so like they're it's not a ripoff of fast times it's just it's like dante's peak and Volcano, Armageddon, and Deep Rising, or Deep Impact. Well, uh, oh. times were different back then because uh, I didn't realize that uh, older women were just into fucking teenage boys. Yeah, Carmela, Car- Carmelia. Oh, what my the, God. There are so many parts in this movie. I'm just like, what the hell? I mean, at the same part, I mean, we've all been teenage boys, and we know how these how these hormones are can be, but like this is like what the hell kind of situations that these boys put themselves in? Like guys, guys, this is this is all the movies that we, we have reviewed so far in this eighties teen sex comedy series. Like, like this feels like borderline parody. You know, you got you got the group of friends. You got the friend who's the hornball who always gets the chicks. You got the fat one, and you got the virgin. Like this, this seems. Like we got all that, and from Porky's and Fast Times and this and, and, and Valley Girl. I mean, this is just like parodying almost. almost. You got archetypes, man. You got a formula. Um, like it has to start somewhere. My favorite part of the movie is that it has it has licensed music in it, but they right. play like the same four songs over and over, like their themes for the characters, and the songs are very. <laughs> I was losing it by the end of the movie when the songs kept kept starting. Like every time Gary sees Karen and it plays um, I'll Keep On Loving You. Yeah. <laughs> it's just the songs, the, the lyrics in the songs just beat you over the head with how you're supposed, like what's happening in the scene. Like we are too dumb to realize that, oh, Gary is always in love with Karen. It, right, the music was right, pretty cool. Right, yeah. I mean, the music was cool, but here's the thing. Do you guys ever look at the poster? Because, well, I mean, I have to because, you know, I post on the site. But the poster is The Last American Virgin, 
And then all around the poster is all the artists that's featured in the movie. It's like, and they were bigger, bolder letters on the poster than the title itself, Last American Virgin. It was like, hey, buy the soundtrack. That's what it seemed like to me when I looked at that poster. Couldn't believe it. it it's Couldn't a little, believe it. A little bit of a false advertising kind of thing, or maybe a misdirect? No, I just, I just, no, not, not it's, it's literally, to me, it was like, hey, don't watch the movie, buy the album. I mean, like you got Devo and you 2 and the police just like, boom, right on the fucking poster. I thought that was crazy. Um, so I said in the beginning here that I didn't care about any of these characters. I really don't. Gary, I was really excited to see him on screen because I know him from my favorite out of the whole franchise. He plays Ted in Friday 13th Part 4, uh, the final chapter. He is best friends with Danny Glover in that movie. Yeah. Nobody. No, I just, I mean, like, he was he was great in that movie. He was fun in that movie. So it was kind of fun to see him here in his in his uh, debut. This is his debut. And then two years later, he did Friday the 13th. It was just always fun to see him. Oh, that's right. I thought yeah. it was fun. I, I, thought it was fun. I thought I've seen all these characters before. Um, you're right. He was in Friday the 13th. And uh, the the guy who played Rick, his, his buddy, he, play, he plays the... Uh, I was like, hey, where is he familiar from? And most familiar, I think, is uh, Troy from the Goonies. Son of a bitch, yeah. He was the, you know, the Chad, you know, the it was going out with Andy. He was the jock at the top of the well. Right. Right. Yeah. Gar- Gary is so fucking unlikable in this movie. He is the nicest of nice guys. Like when if when you get that stereotype in your head, he had he didn't lash out at her, but he basically was nice to her just because he wanted to fuck her. Right. Not not gonna earn sympathy if your main character is just nice to people because they want to get stuff out of them. Ryan, you're right because at the beginning of the movie when they when they dupe the three girls to come to Gary's house for a party and some coke, which really is just sweet and low. Uh, you know, everybody else takes their friends, but everybody else takes their girls to go sleep with them. But then, then like, but Gary is stuck with the big girl and she's like, you're not going to get anything. Nothing's going to happen. And then the next scene, she's in her bra. That's pretty, I'm funny. Like, That's pretty funny how she's just, <laughs> she's just eating chips and he's trying to hook her bra. And she's just letting it happen. Like, I mean, what would have happened if Gary's parents didn't show up? And he finally took the bra off. I mean, was she going to put down the chips? Was she uh, going to allow him to fuck her with her eating chips? I hope not. I don't think so. I don't think Gary would have done anything. Gary was a coward. Clearly. I, 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 I actually know what. No, wait a minute. I don't know if he was a coward. Because, I mean, he got a girl in her bra. Man. Come on. That's a big deal. Well, right. he, he got. Well, if you want to flash forward to the Carmela stuff you mentioned at the beginning. He was mm-hmm. the first one to meet her. He brought the friends back to her, and then he forced the other ones to go ahead of him. Like he had That's to argue with Dave to be point. third, even though it's he could have just gone in. And then the, like the prostitute um, who gives them crabs, he's like he doesn't really want to do it, you know. And that's understandable. It's kind of shady where she takes them. Yeah. But I'm just saying, like when the opportunities have arisen, he doesn't do it that was not romantic at all and i don't blame that young man <laughs> not in the least for uh reacting the way that he reacted that, that's because i'm surprised that he was able to perform i probably wouldn't even I'd be like, no i'm out i'm out of this moment lady what is her name peggy red or the hell i'm just like no this is uh it doesn't it's not for me it doesn't feel right well, why would you bring your friends though why would you bring your friend i mean if i'm a pizza guy and then this foreign woman, older woman, clearly wants to fucking suck my cock. I'm not going to, my first thought's not going to be, let me bring Eric and Ryan over. No, my, fuck you guys. My I'm thinking, have my, fun. my thinking was that, well, he's a coward, but that the scenario, the setup is incredibly strange, right? If you were a teenager, you know, if, if you didn't let your hormones dictate your every thought, 
you would be like, well, this is kind of strange. You know, maybe maybe there's something else going on. But if I have backup, it'll be okay. But not only that, I can score some points with my bros. Yeah. Maybe, okay. Maybe well, that. then. Well, well, I mean, like, but then let us have that thought process, right? Because the movie's so dumb, it doesn't give us a chance to have that thought process. It's very true. There's a lot of stuff that that was my main issue with this movie. It starts off well, like I enjoyed it for probably like the first half, and then it the, like stuff just keeps repeating, like scenarios, not scenarios, but like thematics, um, the points that you're supposed to take from it just keep repeating. Um, but there's a lot of running gags that don't have payoffs, like the stuff they do to Victor. There's no payoff with that. The, the fact that David um, always tallies up the cost of things. There's no payoff of that. I thought I thought when he got told the price of the abortion um, for Karen that that's when that was going to have its, you know, its final moment. But no, that nothing ever comes of that. Um, I thought since they have that obnoxious thing on top of the pizza delivery car that it was going to get destroyed. Does not come into play at all. Those are very, very valid good points on that one. I, I cannot just agree with it, but I do have one other question with the guys, both of you. Eric, I ask you first: Is this gay, is, is 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 this movie secretly about boys being gay? I'm not saying to be a smartass. I'm legitimately asking that question. Well, that um, I would have to ask how, how you see that. Tell me one time ever in the locker room where all three of us is like. All right, pull down your cocks. We're going to measure it. Whoever Hard cocks, and whoever has the biggest dick gets the pot. I do remember that. That is kind of that is kind of weird. That, d- that does it, not happen. I'll agree that's weird, but, I mean, I I know for... So, we referenced that... Um, well, I made a joke about the cookie game a couple episodes. A couple episodes ago. I think the last time we did the teen sex comedy. Yeah. Um. I know for a fact that that happened with um, a lot of the guys on my football team in high school. Um, But I never once considered them homosexual for that. And I don't think this is that far removed from it. No, no. I, I, I get it that there's locker room hazing and it's probably not the, the strangest thing. Is that the strangest thing to happen in this movie? Well, yeah. Okay. Hold on. To me, it is. Okay. (laughs) Hold on now. No, hold on. Because the movie was trying to play it as laughs. Like, Porky's really did well with the locker room stuff with her being called Lassie. And it, it was it was funny. With this, I think the movie was trying to do that because it did the whole uh, people in the girls' showers, just like Porky's. And then, but, then but, the, but the strange choice to me that I thought was weird, right? Just put your mindset in a 16-year-old boy right now, guys is that the camera panned down when all of the boys were in line to show us, the audience, that all of them have a rock hard on. How in the fuck did these 16-year-old kids get a hard on? Or a 17-year-old, whatever. That's weird to me. That's just well, when weird. You, when you stimulate the nerves, the nerve endings on the penis, and, Ryan, and gorges Ryan. with blood. I'm sorry, what? Ryan. You are all, half uh, naked. You're half naked with other guys, and every single guy has a rock hard dick. You're going to sit here and tell me that this is not homoerotic here. I'm not saying it's not homoerotic, but I don't think that. I don't think using that as an example to say the movie's about teenage boys being gay is a stretch. I feel like that's just that's just a thing in the movie. I don't feel like there's again there's no it payoff was, for it. I thought there was gonna be something with Victor's giant cock. Um, nine and a half inches. You know, make sure you measure it properly. Um, but yeah, I don't. I, it was I would weird. Not, it was just weird, man. It's it's weird, but it's not. I, that's I believe something like that would happen in lockers, like locker rooms, like that. That doesn't strike me as something too out of out of the realm of possibility. Because I mean, those All guys, right, those guys shower together and shit. They've seen each other's dicks. All right, I guess I'm in the. Okay. I guess we're going to split hairs on that one. I just found it was weird that they had to show us that they had a hard on because no guy in the locker room is going to get a hard on around other guys. 
Well, I just uh, it, 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 there's. I I don't think you should uh, think too much about it there, Jordan. Oh, well, it just it just okay. The reason why that I'm that I'm bitching about it, that we can move on. It just took me out of the movie because he has ha ha funny joke, right? They come in, and you know, the guy's looking through the people, and they're just like ah, making fun of his cock, blah blah blah. And they're like, he's like, well, I have the biggest dick of you all, and it's like, oh, okay, this is a funny joke. But then cut to a lineup of guys and their whitey tighties with hard dicks waiting to get measured by two other guys right in their face just was like, what the fuck is this? Like, it so you, took me out of it. it did, I was not expecting that. Did you spend the rest of this movie thinking about teenage boys boners? Yeah, it sounds like you went to bed thinking that night about that scene over and over and over, just and, all over the, and over again. The hard, I'm not, the hard I'm, dicks inside their tidy whities I'm not going to satisfy how did they you get erect? with an answer. How did they get... How did did all they jerk each erect? other off? <laughs> what did they do? What would that I look like, like if know. they did? Did they have magazines? What was... What yeah, was what happened? I want to know. Was it Jurgens? I like to know that the listeners are on my side on this one. All right, that's just weird. <laughs> that's just fucking weird. But anyway, but, yeah, but the Carmela stuff is weird, you know, and it's like you invite your friends over because you want some backup. Okay, but it's like, hey... I found her first, so I get first dibs. But like you said, uh, both of you guys have said, you know, Gary, he's just, he's such a wimp. And I, I, oh, God, I don't like him at all. But the person I don't like at all is Karen. Now, Karen's a bitch. Well, Karen that's... is not a nice person. But yeah, she's also, Karen... she's also a teenage girl. Yeah. You got to remember she's... that. But she's a bitch. Well, all of them are. L- literally all of them e- except David uh, are. Have 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 shown shitty qualities. So she shows the sh- she shows the most. And what is I, what, why? No, wait, I'm sorry. N- none of I just want to ask this real quick. Sorry, because I know you're going to go hard in on Karen. Um, what is the difference between her actions in this movie um, and uh, Jennifer Jason Lee's actions in Fast Times at Ridgemont High? Jennifer Jason Lee, it's implied, ends up with the guy. They even say it at the end of the credits. She ends up with the guy who was always there for her. Boo. Like, that's the difference. I mean, like, I mean, she doesn't lead him on. That doesn't make her a bitch. That does not make her a bitch at all. And then she gets pregnant by Rick, first time they have sex, and Rick's trying to pay for it and stuff. He did something that the uh, ticket scalper didn't do. So kudos to Rick, right? But then Rick who didn't takes... try to pay for it. He uh... yeah, he did. He he fucking no, 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 no. He said fuck it, and then Gary paid for it. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, but Gary paid for it. He stepped out, asked money from his boss, stepped up, you know, tried to help her out, and then he like kind of quote-unquote nursed her back to health right at his grandparents place like he helped her out Skip and then he trip too. thinks right and then, and then and then all of a sudden toward you know at the end of the movie he goes to the party or whatever and there she is making out with rick and it's like did you completely forget about this guy who bent over backwards when he shouldn't have or had no reason to to help you and you're gonna here's go back the, to rick here's the thing Right. She doesn't owe him anything, mm-hmm. right? She like she doesn't owe him anything outside of a thank you, and I appreciate what you did. Doesn't owe him a relationship. Doesn't owe him affection. He helped her of his own free vol- uh, of, of his own free will. She accepted it. She was there. She partook. But there is absolutely no reason that she she kissed could... him. She did kiss him. That what I'm saying is like she showed him affection because she's, I'm assuming, really appreciative of the guy who helped keep her giant secret and has shown her affection. But she does not owe him a relationship. She doesn't have to go out with him. She doesn't have to keep herself celibate for him. Right. I understand it's a bitch move to go back to Rick. Karen's not a nice person. Right. Rick is not a nice, not a good friend. But she does not owe Gary thing. I'm not saying she owes him anything. I'm saying that that she's just a bitch. That's all I'm saying. It's not about owning 
meaning no, anything no, no. about like no. oh i but, oh no but go to ahead, say go ahead, Eric. you haven't talked go ahead i i think my perspective I'll, I'll be quick on this one and then ryan can piggyback off i think uh that gary is at fault i think and i agree with ryan on this but gary had never once made his any emotion like told to, to these friends he never once was telling like hey rick man i'm kind of bothered that you know you're going after this karen chick i know how you do you're just gonna you know fuck her and leave her type of thing it's kind of what you do because that's what we see rick do this entire movie uh he, he doesn't let karen know i mean he keeps everything to himself he only he only says something after he's invested all this time and help into into doing it thinking that the appropriate response was going to be he built himself up for this in his own disaster and yeah it's a heartbreak and that's what i saw at the end but i didn't see oh that bitch karen at the end i saw oh that's the bummer dude yeah you got to feel that heartbreak and he had the long drive home roll credits think about what you did you you shameful bitch you know <laughs> but that's that's what it was it's like he I, gary needs to he's just holding everything in dude i hope you learned a lesson Wow. Okay. Ryan, piggyback off it because I, I have a lot of issues with that. But all right. Go ahead. No, I, I mean, I agree. Gary. Watches he, it happen. Doesn't say anything. He tr- he falls in love with Karen without knowing who she is. He f- he builds her up and puts her on this platform as this some this greater thing than, than just a teenage girl that she is. Um, he has to he, he tricks her into getting into her into his car. Um, he asks her if she has a boyfriend and she says no. So he invites her to a party and she says, maybe next time. These are hints. These are, these are hints that she doesn't really like Gary. And then he, he doesn't do anything to try to ingratiate himself with her. He makes out with her friend. Uh, the, the one that they bring Paige, I think her name is the one that they bring for him. He gets into, he, he makes out with her and all this stuff. Uh, Rose. Um, he gets Rose, oh, yes. whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he gets drunk and almost ruins the party uh, when he finds Rick and Karen are now an item. Um, he gets he sh- he says something. He tries to break up them having sex at the football field, uh, and then he gets really pissed at Rick when Rick tells him that he fucked Karen um, while Karen is in the same general vicinity. So like Gary's not nice. He's not good. Like these are not good qualities. Uh, that you would want from a person, but they're teenagers. That's what you got to remember. They are teenagers. Yeah. Just I mean, of, just learning about it. Okay, fine, sure. But I guess my uh, point of it is that you know she gets the abortion. Rick has nothing to do with her. Kind of the same thing as Fast Times at Ridgemont High. He takes care of her. Yeah, she doesn't owe him a relationship. You're right. She doesn't owe him anything. But she gracefully gave him a kiss to show that she appreciates what he has done to help out. She invites him to her birthday party, her 18-year-old birthday party. Hey, why don't you come out to my party because you took care of me? And he's all excited because, I mean, I would be. I take, I, I take care of a girl after just having an abortion, you know. My buddy, uh, who she was sleeping with, kind of pretty much just fucked her and left her, right? And she kisses me, and I think we're, we're connecting, right? And then she invites me to her birthday party, and when I get there, feeling all Saturday Night Fever suave, she's fucking making out with that dude that fucked her, literally right. and figuratively. And here's it's like, the, what the fuck? Here's the thing. She never said they were together. When he, she said... She invited him to the birthday party. He said, oh, really? You want me to go? And she said, yes, I consider you a very good friend. A very good friend. Okay, whatever, guy. Come on, man. That's That's what she said. I know what she said, but she's a bitch move. It's a bitch move. What she did is is a bad thing. She is not a good person for doing what she did. But again, saying like she's a bitch and being upset to like the level that I feel you are. No, I'm not it, really it, upset. I'm they're, they're, well, to be, I don't know, to get so far as to call her a bitch. She is. Um, she did. She's a terrible person. Rick's a bitch. Gary's a bitch. They're all bitches. But the point is, you're only, you're only referring to the female as a bitch, but we've been through this countless times. Um, 
what she did is terrible, but she's a teenage girl. Gary's a teenage boy. Rick's a teenage boy. These are just teenagers doing stupid shit. I mean, okay. Yeah, we got a I, teenager I, 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 story, man. Uh, that's just kind of what I think. I, I, I guess I just wished that there would have been more of a dramatic scene. You know, like, like instead of inviting him to the birthday party, she'd be like, hey, look, I appreciate everything you've done for me or whatever, but look, this did, I'm just not into you, like, you know, stuff. I mean, something, right, to kind of, like, you know, let him down, break his heart so he can build himself back up because nothing destroys you as a, as a young boy who is awful of hormones and all this shit by seeing a girl that you love being with another guy. And I'm just saying that what she did was just a bitch move. That's all. That's all I'm saying is that what she did was a bitch move. I mean, not a single person in this movie is redeemable. Not a single person in this movie is likable. I mean, Gary, I guess kind of, but not really. David. I, David. David, David, the fat sorry. friend. He's probably David the, the only, only. He's like, probably. He's organized. He, he keeps a pocketbook of expenses. He knows what's up. He, does. he knows people. He he's eat. always ready to party. He can wingman it. He obviously brought uh, the girls over to the table. Yeah, no, no, he 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 can do it. I just it's just besides besides David, like Rick, Karen. I just wish there was a better girl out there for Gary. You know, what I mean, kind of like that, uh, kind of like that ugly duckling, right? That we've seen in these kind of movies before. Oh, you know we'll that be likes okay. him. You know, what I mean, that kind of like you know, you know, that fucking likes Gary, but Gary doesn't pay attention because he has to go after the hot chick. But when the hot chick completely fucking destroys him because she's a fucking bitch, then, oh, okay. You know, like, I'm not saying that's good story, right? I'm just saying I wanted to feel for Gary so bad, and I just, I couldn't. You know what I mean? And I wanted something to root for Gary for. But when oh, the movie man. ended with, with him driving and crying, it's like, well, fuck Gary. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, it's like I, it, it, they it stole their friend's nothing. car, not even their friend. They stole some dude's car to go get laid without him, and they end up I just, throwing it in the ocean, lake, river, whatever. Just, it was just upsetting, you know. Like I just, I, I really wanted to root for him, really bad, and I just, god damn, it just sucked, you know. But- the ending caught me off guard too. Like he's like because he's driving in the car for a solid minute before the credits just start. Because I, th- I like you, Jordan. I thought there was gonna be more, and when the credits are, I was like, "Oh, that's it. Yeah, it's over." Yeah. I mean, there is nothing redeemable about. Gar- I mean, what happens? So that means is Gary, Gary and Rick friends. Karen says that she just she's at her 18th birth- birthday. So that means it's implied that these people are all seniors. So what? What's their future? What's going to happen for us to think about? Like, is Gary just going to cry and then wake up the next day and everything's going to be fine and him and Rick and David are just going to go off and try to fuck another whore again? Actually, he gets a gun, Jordan, the next day and he goes to school and he takes them all out. Is it? Okay, so it's April And he says, I love you all. And then he does it to himself, except for David. Who's a cool guy in the it. corner to try to talk well, him down off the ledge? Is this before or after the Brady Bill? Ooh. <laughs> Can I, know, I uh? What I mean here. <laughs> <laughs> Since you said that, I will never get a chance to say this again in any of our movie guys episodes ever. But I just want to say this to my point. Um. So. My wife and I uh, watched a few years ago. We we really loved after this we get into our popcorn. Ring, but we really loved Thirteen Reasons Why. Like like my wife and I loved the first season. Right, it was really cool, like teen drama show. If you guys ever seen it, and they've gone on to do other seasons and they're not good, and we just don't care anymore. Uh, but season two pissed me off, and it pissed her off, uh, and we never watched it since because we all know at our age group that Columbine happened on April 20th, 1999. So in the Stranger Things show in season two, one of the kids, right, he gets guns and everything a la Columbine, and then it's a black screen with white lettering, April 20th. And it's like, really? You're going to go that route? Bad taste. Fuck you. 
and I have no desire to see that show ever again. Yeah, 13 that, Reasons, is that what you said? Yeah, 13, 13 Reasons, reasons why. why. Yeah, well, I'll pass. Because I know that American Horror Story did a school shooting too, but now we're getting off, off topic. We're getting, we're getting off topic, but I, I never got a chance to say that. That always bothered my wife and I. It's like, you know, why? You know what my favorite movie ending of all time is? Mm. Re- remember me? Because you get a surprise 9-11. Yeah. That was so stupid. I saw that with my wife because she loves that movie, and that's so stupid. Eric, you have any idea what the movie is? The is it the rom romantic movie? It's the Robert Pattinson. Uh, I'm a post grad. Don't know what to do with my life. Uh, my father wants me to work at his place, but I don't want to be my father. Oh, hey, look, there's a plane coming towards me while I'm in the twin towers. Credits. Oh, movie. Wow. Out of nowhere, you had no idea it was in 2001. It was just a romantic, what a twist, dr- dramatic film. Like, I, oh my I just, god! I remember watching that in college with all, like my friends, and the part where his sister's in school and the the teacher turns away from the whiteboard and just says September 11, 2001. I was like, really, really, they're gonna do this? And they yeah. did it. They fucking did it. They did it. The ending scene is Robert Pattinson looking out the three towers and a plane's coming at him. Credit. Like, it, like he's in the office, he looks out the window, then the camera pulls away from the office window to, to reveal the Twin Towers, and then you see a shadow of a plane, and then it cuts to black. So is that better than this movie? The ending? I mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> for sure, yeah. For sure, like, they went there. All right, yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah. Good job. Because we at least know what happened to Robert Pattinson, probably. With Gary, what the fuck is going on with Gary? Like, like not a single person. Like, I, I, I said in the beginning of the show, and we're going to pop Koreans now. It's like, it, like I said in the beginning, it, this is like American Pie and Fast Times. But it's, it, but more than I talk to you guys about it, like, there's just not a redeemable quality to any of these characters. You know, like at least with Fast Times, you know, we have characters that we emphasize, emphasize with, and cared about. At least with American Pie, you know. We cared about Jim and we cared about Oz and those guys and their journey through whatever. But this, it's like every single character in this movie is a bitch. Every single one of them. Like they're just, they're just soulless people that I just could not follow at all. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think that the uh, Camilla scene is supposed to be uh, funny. I guess, but I did not find it funny at all. So with that, I'm just, I'm just going for the popcorn right now. I'm just on a small bag. I mean, like you got to see this, in my opinion, for the '80s teen sex drama. Because think about it, we reviewed Valley Girl, Porky's, uh, Fast Times, and this. Right, all of these movies have come out between the years of 1980 and 1980. What two? 83. Yeah. So a lot of movies in between this this area here. Right, so we got three years of these big cultural cultural movies, I would say, about teen sex and life and California. I'm assuming this is where this takes place too. So, like, I just, I, I how about this? I will say, actually, I'm gonna ask you guys this one as well. So, my popcorn is a small bag, but I'm gonna ask you guys the same question. This is my answer for it. So, out of Porky's. Fast Times, Valley, and uh, this one. I'm going to say Valley. I'm saying I'm say this is the worst. Valley is second to worst. I'm going to say Porky's and Fast Times. So, Eric, I'll go with you next. What's your popcorn rating? And then where do you rank these movies that we've seen so far? Jordan, so what's I'm your gonna, popcorn rating for this one? I'm definitely going to agree with you on, on, on all, all parts there. Uh, with the small bag and, and with the list as well. This movie was just a kind of a simple... A uh, story about some some misfit kids living a, a life and trying to get laid uh, in America. That's that's about it. Show some titties. Here's a little heartbreak. Roll the credits. I agree with you. I don't um, sympathize or empathize with any of these characters. Uh, as Gary especially. I know they're trying to make him to be like, like this bad guy, but it's like, dude, you you're a, a simp, and it's every definition. And that's that's a word that is on the internet now. So that's that's what it is. That's what he is. He he built himself up. Sorry, buddy, that sucks. Uh, David's a cool guy. Would bang again. Small bag. 
All right, uh, and and then also, Eric, you agree with my list. So, Ryan, popcorn rating in your list. Destroyed you that think? car with no consequence. Fuck no consequence. That's just what we expect. Ryan, what about you, bud? Uh, well, we're all three in agreement on both the list and the score. Um, this is a small bag. Uh, this is the worst. Of the, this is the least of the bunch so far. Um, like I said earlier, my biggest issue was that there. I feel like there's no payoffs to a lot of running gags. A lot of scenes just come uh, without like a lot of setup. They just kind of happen. The main character is atrocious. I'm very surprised that this is based off of an Oscar nominated or a Golden Globe nominated movie. Like it was shortlisted for the Oscars way back when, and you have the same guy writing, directing. And the same people producing the movie. Um, like I'm interested in seeing Lemonade Popsicle just to see like how much is similar. Because this feels like this feels like a straight up teen exploitation flick that was made to uh, quickly to get money, and that's that. Like that's all they cared cared about. And this is a Canon film uh, picture. If you guys know anything about Canon film, that's like their big mo is make them fast, make them cheap. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't recommend this to people. I, I do think that this would make, like, if they remade it, I, there there is a lot of opportunity. Like, there is a skeleton of a good movie in here. It's just what they did with it is not good. Wow. We're all in agreement. This is rare at Movie Guys Podcast. All of us are in agreement, including the list. That's actually shocking. Next week, though... You're gonna be hearing a dis. Uh, you're gonna be hearing a different voice on Movie Guys podcast. My brother Brandon from Florida will be joining us with our review of Eyes Wide Shut. Ryan, you're going on vacation. I'm going on vacation. Where are you going, bud? Uh, the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Uh, my Ooh. wife's family has uh, some cabins up there, and we will be spending a week in a uh, c- civilized wilderness, I guess. There's no internet. That's basically the wilderness for me. What part of the UP? Marquette? Uh, Maybe the Sioux? Uh, Manistique? Oh, okay. Enjoy. That's All nice. I know... Are you guys going to be doing some trails? It's beautiful up there. <laughs> Everyone's loving it. Everyone's trying to get to the UP right now like they discovered the painted rocks we're going to some falls to Quaminon to Quaminon Quaminon falls Falls. yes you'll enjoy it you're you're gonna be right by pictured rocks as well too maybe you guys can go there too okay it's a long that's a long hike man but it's gorgeous absolutely gorgeous well we will be joining next week Eric and I will be joined with my brother Brandon for our New series that we're starting up, which is director's last films. And we're going to be doing Stanley Kubrick's Eyes Wide Shut. So tune in for that one for next week with uh, my brother Brandon and Eric. And then Ryan will be back after that. We're going to be doing our new Netflix movies with Eurovision. And we're going to end August with 1922. We're going back to horror because I cannot wait for horror films, especially since we got the new haunting of Hill House season two coming up in October. And we all know that you, you the fans, that's the most download episode ever. So you guys won't listen to that one. So Eric, Ryan, thank you so much for joining me for this episode. I greatly appreciate it. I had a fun time with this one. Uh, thank you so much guys for downloading. Make sure to check us out on all the social media networks and also on movie guys, podcast at podme.com. Have a good night.